What's up guys, here my predictions for UFC on ESPN4 happening this Saturday, and the card actually is pretty solid, I mean you got some good prospects, some good veterans, top contention bouts, I mean you have it all in this card. And we're gonna start with Andre Arlovsky versus Ben Rothwell, the battle of the heavyweight veterans, and actually a rematch that people don't know about. Andre Arlovsky actually knocked out Ben Rothwell back in 2008 during his affliction days, but that's 11 years ago, and Andre Arlovsky I would say has declined. Whereas Ben Rothwell kind of plateaued or is a little bit stagnant in his career. And that's automatically going to put Ben Rothwell at a big advantage because Arlovsky's chin is absolutely gone. Compared to last time, I mean, any shot from Ben Rothwell, one big one, and Arlovsky's pretty much out of there. But Arlovsky is a lot more methodical these days. He isn't reliant on his speed like he used to be. He was very fast for a heavyweight back then when he fought Ben Rothwell. And Rothwell is always such a big guy, but he was always known to be a bit slow even for a heavyweight. But Arlovsky, he's still going to have a bit of a speed advantage. He still has the power to hurt Ben Rothwell with that right hand of his. But Ben Rothwell's cardio has greatly improved since last time. And that was a big hindrance in his game before. With the switching of stances of Rothwell with power and everything he throws, he gets into the parallel stance, which is a very offensive stance in the way he uses it. It can put him in harm's way from the right hand of Arlovsky, but Arlovsky, if he trades with Rothwell at any given moment, takes one to give one, Rothwell's going to win that every single time. And that's pretty much how I see this fight ending. So my prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Ben Rothwell. I think Arlovsky's going to be able to get in, land some shot on Rothwell, but at the same time, I think Rothwell can eat it and also meet Arlovsky with one of his own punches. But I don't think Arlovsky's going to be able to take it. That's pretty much how I see this happening. I actually think Arlovsky may be the better striker, maybe a little bit more technical, a little bit more savvy, but the attributes and the weak chin of Arlovsky is just way too big of a factor in this one. So I'm going to go with Ben Rothwell. I'm going to go by a second round TKO. And then we go to Alexander Hernandez versus Francisco Trinaldo, which is actually a very interesting fight. So Hernandez is a highly doubted prospect for many MMA fans out there. Not just fighting skill. I mean, he has the look. He has the talk. He has a personality to be something big, but the skills is really what matters. I mean, he fought Donald Cerrone a little bit too quick in his career, and he acknowledged that his quick win over Benil Dariush may have made him a little bit too overconfident. He's a good wrestler, very strong and fast to come in with his right hand or even with his takedowns. He has good power in his hands, and he will switch off of his punches, very similar to like a TJ Dillashaw, but his defense is a little bit lacking. Against a guy like Trinaldo, who's been in there with many veterans, many experienced fighters, Trinaldo's the kind of fighter to keep it very fundamental and look for the counter shots. I mean, Trinaldo has great power in his hands. He has good kicks as well. He can go into a sort of a karate-esque style and get in and out on his opponent. It can give the opening for Hernandez a single leg, but if Hernandez tries to switch in, I can see Trinaldo landing a dynamite of a right hand. That combined with Hernandez's defense when he tries to come in as well as when he tries to retreat from his entries, it proves a lot of danger for Hernandez. He keeps his chin up in the air a lot of times. When he's moving out, there's really no defense. He's good in neutral position, but when he's moving, he is a lot more vulnerable. And I would like to see him get a bit more aggressive when he's committing with his punches, you know, mix it up with the takedowns, which is something he hasn't been doing too much, but it's a great asset to his style, but Trinaldo has great BJJ as well, good takedown defense. It's going to be a tough fight for both these fighters. I think it's going to be extremely competitive, but my prediction for this fight, it's going to be tough to call because a guy like Hernandez would be someone who will get better from his loss to Donald Cerrone. It's going to be hard to predict how much better he's going to be for this fight and what he's going to do out there that's going to be a little bit different, but if I'm going to have to pick, I'm going to go with Francisco Trinaldo. I understand a lot of people pick Hernandez, and I think Hernandez can obviously win this fight, but I think Trinaldo can exploit some more weaknesses that Hernandez doesn't understand yet of his game. I mean, he's very young. He's getting pushed to these veterans very quickly. And I think that could backfire again for this fight. Trinaldo is extremely underrated. When he's on, he could compete with some of the top 15 fighters in this division. So I'm going to go with Francisco Trinaldo. I'm going to go by a decision. I think he's going to win two rounds out of the three. And then we go to James Vick versus Dan Hooker. Two long, tall fighters for this division. And as for James Vick, that's really what he relies on when he's backing away, looking for counter shots, looking to measure. But when he's fighting someone who's very close in length, it's going to be interesting how that disrupts his style, right? Dan Hooker is aggressive. He's ferocious out there. He has legit knockout power. And I do see this being mostly a striking battle. Both are really good at BJJ. But I don't think either are going to go for the takedown in this one. I think they're both so confident in their striking. It's going to make for a great long-range battle on Vic's side, which is what he wants to do. And for Hooker's side, he's going to want to get in close and mix it up. And there comes a big problem for James Vic. 
when fighters get in on him, he tends to make some drastic errors, especially with his footwork and movements. And also, he never keeps a guard up. It's only footwork. That's his main defense. Moving away, using his length. The length is going to be reduced in this one, and... Hooker is not going to let him get away. Hooker's going to go right after him and look for his openings straight away. And that's going to be a huge bomb from James Vick. And ultimately, that's why I think is going to make Dan Hooker win this fight. So my prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Dan Hooker. I'm going to go by a second round TKO. I think he's going to land some big bombs over the top. I think he's going to walk James Vick down. I think he's going to be a bit defensive. Watch out for the push kicks. Watch out for the knees. Watch out for the uppercuts and as well as the jab, which are the main weapons that James Vick has. And I think Dan Hooker is going to look for some counter shots, especially that left hook as he parries a jab or moves in on some of the kicks. And I think it's going to get to James Vick very quickly in the fight. And if Hooker is able to get on the inside due to some sort of aggression, I just don't see James Vick handling it well at all. And then we go to the co-main event, Alexei Olenek versus Walt Harris. The veteran versus the young up-and-comer. And Walt Harris is performing pretty well, especially in his last fight, finishing his fight very quickly. That's what I like to see from Walt Harris. Sometimes he allows it to drag on when it looks like he can actually explode a little bit more. He has big power in his hands, but more impressively, he has great volume, right? He has very good shot selection. And I like to see him go to that more, especially in this fight where he's going to have a striking advantage. Don't go on the ground with Olenek. That's the main thing. Olenek is one of the most dangerous submission artists to ever compete in the heavyweight division. But Olenek's striking is extremely wild. And there's almost no calculation to it. I mean, overhands, looping punches. He has okay power. But he really tries to make it chaotic until it gets to the ground. He could drag the opponent to the ground. His takedowns aren't really that great. But pulling guard, pulling the opponent on top of them, even if they get into full mount. I mean, it doesn't matter. Get on the ground somehow. That's the main way Olenek is going to get this fight to the ground because... Walt Harris has amazing takedown defense. But simply, my prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Walt Harris. I mean, if he plays as smart, like it looks like he's been doing recently in his career, keep the volume high, threaten Olenek whenever he tries to come in. Olenek goes for looping punches all the time. Walt Harris is very good with straight shots, so I think he's going to be able to land on the inside. And if he can keep the punch count high, Olenek's going to have a hard time even getting on the inside at all. I have a hard time seeing Olenek get into the ground, but... Olenek got Mark Hunt to the ground, and I didn't think he was going to be able to do that. So it's going to be a tough fight. But I think with the right game plan, Walt Harris should win this fight. So I'm going to go with Walt Harris. I'm going to go by a second round TKO. And then we go to the main event, the by far the biggest fight in this entire card with great title aspirations. Rafael Dos Anjos versus Leon Edwards. I think this fight's going to be a lot closer than people think. And the betting odds seem to agree as well. They think Leon Edwards is going to win, but very slightly. It's almost a pick em fight. Leon Edwards has been looking extremely impressive. He has great striking, great wrestling, good takedown defense. I mean, he's a solid, well-rounded fighter. Great knockout power as well. I mean, you saw that elbow on Gunnar Nelson. I mean, who lands on Nelson the way he did? Even in the clinch, man, where Rafael Dos Anjos likes to get on the inside. He likes to drive him for takedowns a lot. Keep the volume high. If he clinches up with Leon Edwards, it might be a different kind of strength, a different kind of manipulation from Leon Edwards that RDA has not fought yet. And that's saying something. Rafael Dos Anjos has fought some of the best fighters to ever compete in this sport. And he keeps a very high output on his opponent. And he mixes up very well with takedowns, especially that blast double leg. So in the southpaw stance, he'll throw a lot of jabs, look for the straight left, follow it up with another right hand, see the counter shot from the opponent, and instantly goes under for the double leg, drives it to the cage. If he's not able to get it to the ground, he will eventually disengage, throw a big left body kick, and then rinse and repeat. A very hard style to deal with. But Leon Edwards is very good at switching stances, which is going to throw off the southpaw advantage that Rafael Dos Anjos usually has on his opponents. And Leon Edwards is a lot longer. Leon Edwards is one of the longest fighters Artie has ever been scheduled up against in his entire career. I would say the only one longer is Tony Ferguson, and Artie had a hard time with that reach as well, man. From the uppercuts to the straights to the constant jabs, and not only that, Edwards is very good at distance management. He knows how to keep that distance safe. He knows how to create traps for the opponent whenever they try to come on the inside. He has great knees, great kicks. He does it all, man. His fight IQ is extremely high. But, my prediction for this fight, I'm going to go with Leon Edwards. Now, I think RDA is going to have a hard time getting in close on Leon Edwards, right? Gunnar Nelson was able to do it with his elusive footwork. He was always in and out. It kept Leon Edwards at edge a couple times. He would throw the right hand and switch into his takedown. RDA doesn't really have that quick footwork, that elusiveness to him, you know? And he's a lot shorter than Gunnar Nelson. Artie is a lot more Muay Thai oriented on the feet. And Leon Edwards takes long strides throughout that cage. It's going to be very hard for Artie to get on the inside. And I think on the outside, Leon Edwards can pop out a lot of jabs, potentially switch stances, throw a lot of high kicks, a lot of body kicks. The only thing that makes me think Artie definitely has a chance of winning this fight is 
if he can get Leon Edwards to back up to the cage, Edwards has shown many times that he is susceptible to getting driven to the cage from a takedown, especially a double leg, and that is RDA's game. But I'm going to lean towards Leon Edwards winning by a fourth round TKO. I can see a high kick eventually catching RDA. So now let's look at the rest of the fights. Greg Hardy and Juan Adams is like a pick em. It's extremely hard to say who would win that fight. I have seen Adams have a hard time with pure aggression before. And Greg Hardy has legit knockout power. He's more athletic and he's a thousand times faster than Adams. So I'm going to lean Hardy on that one. I think Raquel Pennington may have hit a mental block in her career and Renee Aldana is hitting a new stride in her career. So I'm going to lean Aldana on that one. Gabriel Silva definitely has a big chance of defeating Ray Borg. Silva's extremely dangerous, man. Legit knockout power. And looking at the betting odds, I mean, the first fight on the card is the only real big difference in odds. And it's between two inexperienced fighters in the UFC. So you know how that usually goes. And both fighters have been doing pretty well. Actually, the underdog, Felipe Colares, has fought in the UFC at least once and he lost that fight but I think that's why they're making Domingo the favorite Ray Borg could lose that fight Gabriel Silva's absolutely no joke I have Roxanne Modafferi winning that fight I don't know why they would pick Jennifer Maya as the favorite and all the other odds are so close I can agree with all of them so I hope you guys enjoyed the predictions and if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed my content make sure to subscribe my next video is going to be maybe a reaction video. We'll see. But definitely there will be a breakdown on the card. So be looking out for that. And again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.